When I was around about the age of 13, I was a little bit cheeky, but well, I think I was a little bit naive as well, looking back. Terry George says he was 13 and a keen collector of celebrity interviews when he met Michael in Leeds in the north of England. For the rest of the Jacksons, it was just another stop on their 1979 European tour. But for Michael, says Terry George, it was a chance to make a new friend. Uh, what is your name? Michael Jackson. Michael would tour all over the world. There were little boys everywhere that would come to the hotels. And what is your job? Still. I'm a singer. I didn't really mingle with other people, and I didn't really have a lot of friends then. Determined to interview his idol, Terry says he found out where the Jacksons were staying. Then, armed with Michael's hotel room number and a tape recorder, he simply knocked on his door. Uh, what do you like most? Things that you like? I like kids a lot. <laughs> wow. Certainly a lot smaller than it ever was. It uh, feels like it's been totally restructured. Michael said, who is it? And I said, oh, my name's Terry. I've come to do an interview. And then he opened the door and says, oh, he uh, looked a bit shocked to see me, really. <laughs> He's probably looking at this level. I was down here somewhere. I came into the room and I was sat on this bed here. But the gap seemed much bigger as well because I had my, my tape recorder down there. Terry George says that at the end of the interview, he and Michael Jackson swapped phone numbers. You know, him giving me his number and asking for mine didn't really feel strange at all. It was great. It was a thrill. It was, you know, I was happy to be in touch with the celebrity. After the tour left Britain, Terry George says that Michael Jackson started calling two or three times a week and they had friendly conversations about their lives. His calls came quite late at night, normally for anything from 11 in the evening, 10 in the evening, right through to 5 o'clock in the morning on some occasions. And then one night, he says Michael made a call that Terry has never forgotten. I had phone sex with Jacko, is what the press wrote. I met with Terry George to hear his account of what really happened that night. He spoke about masturbation. About him masturbating, did I masturbate? I never saw it coming. Um, it wasn't something I expected. It just came out of the blue, really. He said, would you believe that I'm doing it now? And let me hear him on the telephone, I could hear it. And what did you think he meant by that? Well, I knew what he meant by that, because he was talking about it. He was talking about masturbation. I did feel uncomfortable. I can remember feeling uncomfortable. I felt awkward. What are your thoughts when you put the phone down? I thought that I didn't react as he wanted me to react. And I thought that perhaps he would never call me again or I wouldn't hear from him again. You know, in hindsight, looking back at it now, I know that that type of conversation probably should never have happened, you know, and it probably wasn't natural. Terry George says there were no more sexual conversations. In time, the two lost touch. Terry George's friendship with Michael Jackson was over. Some people who've investigated Michael Jackson say he ultimately rejects many of his young friends. Michael Jackson changes his phone numbers. He's not available on the telephone anymore. As soon as they appear to be a little bit more into puberty or that they have gotten their first uh, facial hair, he just moves on to the next little special friend.